All right, let's talk a little bit about antennas and antenna gain here. So right off the rip, you're gonna notice that most of your antennas are probably gonna have a DBI value. Reason for that is realistically that that number is always bigger than its DBD value and the bigger numbers always sell. DBI, mostly you're gonna see that on consumer stuff and DBD, you'll see that more on commercial stuff. But, you know, sometimes that will switch back and forth. Just keep keep in mind that an 8 dBi gain antenna is the same as a 5.85 dBd gain antenna. All right, now let's look at a radiating pattern of an 8 dBi gain omni. So the reason why it's an omni antenna is when we're looking at the tip of the antenna down at it, you're going to notice it's a 360 degree pattern. And now here's where the gain comes in is if we have an antenna right here, its pattern, its gain is mostly going to be in this direction. You're going to notice there's some of these little splashes right here. We'll come back to that in, in a little bit. Now a note on gain, anytime we go up in gain, we get more directive. You know, think of it as... Uh, turning the um, the reflector on a flashlight. You don't have any more power, you're just changing its directivity more from a flood to a, to a spot. So if we look at this 15 dBi gain antenna, you're gonna notice it's a little grid type antenna. So we obviously have more directivity to it. And if we look at our pattern, you're gonna see we have a more directive pattern, it is you know, obviously pointing in one direction. This is both the top down, if you're looking at it top down, and with the antenna this way. So obviously we have directivity, a very narrow beam width. All right, and here's where some people seem to get caught up a lot on. Oh, if I go in higher gain, I'm going to overshoot certain areas of my, of my coverage. Well, here's a little chart to look at and something to keep in mind, right? So I think we have an 8 dBi gain antenna, you know, with a maybe a 20, 20 degree beam width. On a 500, or sorry, on a 100 foot tower, we're 600 feet out. On a 500 foot tower, we're about 3,000 feet out. Now remember, that's where the gain is going to hit the ground. In it's mo you know, in the most gain pattern. Now, if we bring this back here, if you look, look at these little splashes under here. This isn't 100% zero. This isn't nothing. You obviously have a little bit of gain here. And even if that is negative gain less than, you are still close enough that you're obviously gonna gonna pick that up. Now, the big problem with this, you know, most of you aren't having 500 foot towers. I can almost guarantee you that. The big problem with this is going to come down to, say, you're on a mountain, a very sharp peak, right? And that's 800 feet above sea level, and you got a 500 foot tower on there. You know, okay, so this number is going to go way, way far out. But one thing you got to keep in mind, if you've got that good of a site, you're better off making more money renting the site out to other things rather than putting a helium hotspot on it. And on top of that too, you're probably not looking at this guy's freaking YouTube video to figure out which antenna game to, uh, to use. So when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, I'm always going to su suggest going with the highest gain antenna that you can get. Realistically, these, you know, a lot of these people aren't putting them on, on super, super tall buildings or they don't have super tall towers. For the most part, as, le as far as what I can tell, you know, these are maybe going 30 feet up in the air, 40 feet up in the air, 50 feet up in the air, um, above, above ground level. You know, if you guys have other opinions, let me know, but this is what I'm thinking.